how to raise some people to serve God. Unataka tuongee kuhusu how jinsi ya kuinua watu kumtumikia Mungu. Now according to Jesus teaching, kulingana na mafundisho ya Yesu, every Christian should serve God. Kila mkristo anatakana amtumikie Mungu. Anyone who does not serve God actually can get into trouble. Mtu yote ambaye hatamtumikia Mungu atapatikana tabani. According to Matthew 25 the last day parables. Na kulingana na Mathayo 25 hata zile mifano za mwisho mwisho. And serving God actually bring satisfaction and the rewards of God. Na kumtumikia Mungu inaleta kule kuridhisha na furaha kwa Mungu. So there are all kinds of reasons that people should serve God. Kuna sababu nyingi sana ili watu wamtumikie Mungu. There is also fulfillment when we see people being trained You know, grace up to serve God. Kuna kudhibitisha sasa zile tunaona watu wakinuliwa kumtumikia Mungu. So if people raise up, you know, in a, to be a healthy Christian, he should want to serve God. Sasa mtu akinuliwa kuwa mkristo ni ya haki sana kumtumikia Mungu. But it's also a fact that there are different soils according to Jesus parable of the sowers. Na kuna tofauti ya mifano ya Yesu kuhusu mpandaji. There are four kinds of soil. Kuna mchanga mara ine. The first kind is the Satan will come to eat take away the The word of God immediately after the person here the word of God kwanza yule mmoja atakuja achukue hiyo mbeku haraka sana inapokuja hapa And then the second kind is a shallow soil so it doesn't have root Haina ingine ya mchanga ni yenye iko juu sana And then the third kind of people that had Uh, the seed falls in the thorns and thistles na aina ingine ya mchanga ni mchangi nanguka katika mamiba na miba zinaidunga ni inakufa so the seed doesn't have a chance to grow ili kwamba hiyo mbegu isiendelee and then there is a good soil na kuna mchanga ulio mzuri now if i draw a pyramid a triangle nikichora nikichora mm Miraba mitatu in a church how many people you know more um, what kind of people are most of the people there oni watu wangapi katika kanisa wako hapo mahali you find that it's true that in many churches most people are at the bottom like you know the triangle na kwa maana mimi utapata wakristo wako katika miraba mitatu the people who are not steady in the faith ni watu ambao hawako tayari ama adabiti katika imani yao. The people are not concerned about their relationship with God. Ni watu wenye wajali kuhusu ushirika wao pamoja na Mungu. Or people who are tied up with problems in their life. Ni watu ambao wameshika na shida za maisha. Now this triangle you can draw it and use it at, in your church too, you know. Yeah. Any of that, these ideas you can use yeah, in your church. Hivi unaweza chora na ukafananisha na kanisa lako kule. So at the bottom are people who really you know, have a problematic relationship with God. Has And then high up the people who are more steady but who might have problems in a relationship with God. And then higher up are people who goes to church who go to church steadily na watu wanaoenda kanisani kama wako thabiti and then next sub are people who wants to serve god na ni watu ambao wanatumikia mungu and then next sub are people who take care of different problems in their life na and serve god na ni watu ambao watashughulikia hali zingine katika maisha na kumtumikia mungu and the highest one are the people who serve god with motivation and with strategy na hawa juu ni wenye wanatumikia mungu na mipangilio Now let me ask you what is the largest number in the church Na hata nikuulize ni nambari gani kubwa ambayo iko kanisani Is it the people at the bottom or the people at the top Ni watu wenye wako hapa chini ama ni watu wenye wako hapo juu The people at the bottom Watu wenye wako hapa chini One reason is many people are not good soil ya sababu ni kwamba watu wengi si mchanga wa rutuba. 
Many people come to church for their own benefit. Watu wengine hukujana kanisa kwa sababu ya faida zao. They want to get friends or get help with their problems. Wanataka marafiki ama wanataka wasaidiwe kwa shida zao. That they are not turned to Jesus. Lakini hawajamrudia Yesu. And then when people are turned to Jesus, there are all kinds of hindrances. Na watu wakimrudia Yesu kuna ile bizuizi. In your church you might have people who want to serve God. Katika kanisa lako watu wakitaka kumtumikia Mungu. But they have problems at home. Lakini wako na shida zao nyumbani. Relationship problem in relationship with people. Uhusiano pamoja na watu. Problems in their sins. Shida ya dhambi. Problem in in negative emotions and thinking. Shida katika kufikiria na mawazo yaliyo mabaya. Because there are all kinds of ways that Satan use, uses to control Christians. Maana hizo ndiyo njia shetani hutumia kuongoza ama kuelekeza wakristo. Now so we first understand the situation. Sasa tunataka tuelewe hiyo hali. Christians are really attacked from all directions. Wakristo wameweza kushambuliwa kutoka kila pembe. Only Christians who see the blessings of God. Wakristo tu wenye wanaona baraka za Mungu. And set their eyes on Jesus. Na wanawatazamia macho yao kwa Yesu. And know how to handle different kinds of problems in their life. Na wanajua kushughulikia hali tofauti tofauti katika maisha yao. And then they are motivated to serve God. Now I made dia chenga kumtumikia Mungu. And they are trained to serve God. Now I'm mfunzwa kumtumikia Mungu. And they are led to serve God. Na wako tayari kumtumikia Mungu. That they will start to serve God. That they will start to serve God. Wataanza kumtumikia Mungu. Now there are people in some churches who wants to serve God. Kuna watu wengine katika makanisa ambao wanataka wamtumikie Mungu. But the pastor doesn't know how to motivate them or raise them up. Lakini mchungaji hajajua jinsi ya kuwatia jenga na kuwainulia, kuwainua. They don't know how to help them handle the problems. Hajui jinsi ya kuwasaidia kushughulikia hali zao. They don't know how to train them and you know and, and give them chance to practice ajui jinsi ya kuwafunza na wape wakati wa kuweka kadhahiri mambo yao and they don't know how to lead them into service ajui jinsi ya kuwaongoza katika ibada so there are problems of, with these people sasa kuna shida na watu there are problems with the a church and the leadership kuna shida na kanisa na viongozi so there are all kinds of things satan use uses to Block people from serving God. Ndiposa kuna mambo mingi yenye shetani anatumia kuzuia watu kumtumikia Mungu. So first we realize the situation. Kitu cha kwanza tumesikia hali. And then we see when we see a Christian really grow and want to serve God. Na tunaona Mkristo ambaye anakuwa na anataka kumtumikia Mungu. We know that this is really this person is really precious. Unaona huyu mtu kweli ni mtu wa dhamana. And we treasure the person and raise the person up. Na ile hazina yenye iko ndani yake yenye Mungu ameweka ndani yake. Now on the way when he serves God, katika njia nayo mtumikia Mungu. There are also other ways to stop him. Kuna njia zingine za kumzuia. For instance when he serves God he may have problem with other people who serve God. Kwa, kwa njia nyingine utaona anapotumika atakutana na watu wengine ambao wanamtumikia Mungu. Or sometimes he get discouraged and no one help them. Na wakati mwingine anashushika moyo na hana mtu wa kumfariji. So now we realize that I'll just let you have a picture that you know there are all kinds of ways to stop Christian serving God. Na ndiposa nataka uwe na ile picha ya kwamba jinsi ya kuona vitu ambavyo vinavizuia wakristo kumtumikia Mungu. In a congregation of 100 people katika umati wa watu 100 now you might be able to find people who are willing to cook and serve food, you know, that kind of a ministry. Now that is very important too. When people are willing to do that is very good. But the ministry that is most important is bringing people to Jesus and raising their spiritual life up. Lakini huduma iliyo mzuri sana ni kuleta wakristo kanisani na kuwainua juu. That means a ministry that is related to the great commission. Na hiyo ndio huduma ambayo imekaribia na ile mwito mkuu. And those kind of people will help 
the church to grow. Now ndio watu watasaidia kanisa kukua. Okay? Okay. Okay. Now, so now so this concepts, hello. Hello. This concepts we need to keep in mind the hii mawazi natakana tuweke katika nia zetu. Now you notice in my teaching I, I always give you a number of concepts. Unajua katika mafunzo yangu nakupa mawazo mengine ama kutafakari kwingine. I want to distinguish, you know, this kind of teaching and also preachers who give motivation. Nataka utofautishe hii mafundisho na wakristo na waombi wenye wanaleta msisimko. Now I'm not saying one is better than the other. Sisemi mmoja ako bora kushinda mwingine. But you know that, you know, some preachers will give a lot of motivation in the church. Unajua wakristo wengine watapeana msisimko mwingine kanisani. That's one thing people need. Kuna kitu kimoja wakristo wanahitaji. But another thing people need is understanding the situation and understand oh, yes. what to do yes. so this is training Sasa hii, this is motivation yeah. That the other one is motivation Ile ingine, ni kusisimua. and mostly do training lakini mimi ufanya mafundisho. In my training I also motivates. Katika mafundisho yangu tena mimi uchochea. So you understand what I'm doing then you can understand more. Sasa ukielewa chenye nafanya unaweza elewa zaidi. Okay? okay. Now, first I want to give you a picture of the biblical teaching of the importance of following God and serving God. Na ndiposa kanataka nikuonyeshe mafundisho katika Biblia e umuhimu wa kumtumikia Mungu. Na kumfata. And you can write this down a picture of a house. Now I'll show you the picture of a house. Sasa utachora hii chini mfano picha ama mfano wa nyumba. Okay, it's like this. It has a top. Iko iko na pa. Iko iko na pa. And then two blocks on the right hand side and two blocks on the left hand side. Ya kwamba ama ukuta upande mmoja na ukuta mwingine upande mwingine. Allow enough room to write. I, I'm going to tell you what to write there. Na kwa maana kwa rooms nitawaambia cha kuandika pale. Okay, on top. It says, juu ya nyumba, everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from him. Ya kwamba kila kitu kiko mikononi mwa Mungu na hakuna yule ambaye anaweza kutoroka. I'll tell them to say after you. Everything is in God's hand. Tell them the same after you. Mseme nyuma yangu. Kila kitu kiko mikononi mwa Mungu. Kila kitu kiko mikononi mwa Mungu. And no one can run away from him. Na kuna mtu ambaye anaweza toroka kutoka kwake. Now let me ask you, do you believe that everything is in God's hand? Je, wacha niwaulize. Mnaamini kila kitu kiko mikononi mwa Bwana? Yes. Psalm 24:1. Zaburi 121:1 That talks about the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Ni ambaye inaongelea kuhusu dunia yote ni ya Mungu na kila kitu kiishimo. So our life is in God's hand. Maisha yetu yako mikononi mwa Bwana. Our future, atima yetu. Our health, afya yetu. Everything we do, kila kitu tunachokitenda. Is in God's hand. Kiko mikononi mwa Bwana. No one can run away from it. Hakuna mtu ambaye anaweza toroka kutoka kwake. Another Bible verse you can write down. Now the Bible verse put it away from the house because the house each block I will tell you what it is. But I'll tell you now the house. Nitakwambia kuhusu nyumba lakini okay, maybe I'll tell you the Bible verse later. Okay. Now so on top juu ya nyumba everything is in God's hand and no one can run away from him kila kitu kiko mikononi mwa Mungu na hakuna ambaye anaweza kutoroka let me ask you do you totally believe that wacha niulize ambaye wale wanaoamini hiyo do you totally believe that unaamini hiyo now let me ask you a question wacha nikuulize swali how come some pastors sometimes steal money kwa I mean, I'm asking you. I'm not saying you are. Yeah. <laughs> Some pastor are. Na kuulizia sisemi wewe. Kwa nini wakati mwingine wachungaji wanaiba pesa? When they steal money, do you think they they know that God sees them? Wanapoiba pesa, unafikiri wanafikiria kwamba Mungu anawaona? 
or when they commit adultery. <laughs> you have heard about some pastors on TV, right? Now, when they commit adultery, do they know that everything is in God's hand? But it seems that even though we know that, we don't have it really deep in our heart. So when they were tempted to steal money or to have adultery, they might say, judgment is a far, you know, long time, long way away, a long time away. I'll repent later. I'll repent later. And, and don't, I don't want to think about God. I just want to think about the present time. Or why do some pastors or some Christians steal people from other churches? Okay, now. So it shows that people, even though they know that, they don't really totally believe it or follow it. Okay, now I want to say this. Any of these concepts I'm talk I talk about, don't just teach one time in a church. Keep teaching these concepts. These concepts are actually in the Bible. But people just don't see it as very important. And they let negative thoughts or sins take over themselves. So I'm saying this concept, if people, Christians really know we cannot run away from God, then everyone will follow God and love God. And so this is something for us to talk about from time to time. And talk about it from different angles. Now for, I use an illustration. Now in Hong Kong, sometimes we go to restaurants and then they have parking. And then they say if you eat, uh, your bill is $200, then you get one hour free or two hours free. But the restaurant sometimes in order to please the customers when I only have a bill of $150 he will give me a receipt of $200 or more so I can have the free parking. But I talked with my wife and I said, I don't want to take advantage of that. <laughs> because one day I'll stand in front of God. And God will ask me, why did you take that receipt which you did not have? Amen. So we refuse to take advantage of things even though when it's free, freely given to us. Now I have many examples of this that God guides me to handle my life in a very careful way. So if we handle our lives like that, and we share with people our examples, people would realize that yes, we have to face God one day. And also the discipline or the punishment of God doesn't wait until 
judgment time yeah. it will come now then life becomes difficult so do you want the blessings of God now if we want the blessings of God at the same time we commit secret sins what do we think about God? we think that his eyes are closed <laughs> and his death <laughs> and he did not see our problems <laughs> Now, if we know that God sees everything, then I want to follow God. And with joy, because I know God is happy with me when I do that. So I obey God with joy and freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We can all live joyfully if we follow God totally. Okay? So right. this you can teach about in about it in your church many times. And then on the right hand side, when we have a close relationship with God and obey God, God will bless us. Say it. When we have a close relationship with God and obey God. Let's say again. Say again. Say it again. And God will bless us. And so seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. Mm. Matthew 6.33 And then at the bottom He who serves God will be rewarded by God now and also in heaven. Say after him. 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 Say after an easy way to na, serve God. Na yesu njia ya mungu. He says that even when you give a cup of cold water to a little one, you by no means lose your reward. Yeah. So Jesus did not say when you bring one person to, to Jesus, then you be, you receive reward. He make it easy for us. But we don't stop at one cup of cold water. We can do much more, right? Yes. And then on the left side, he who does not obey God and doesn't have a good relationship with God, he'll reap destruction. And then on the bottom, he who does not serve God, can also reap destruction. So I ask you this question. Everything is in God's hand. No one can run away. And the right side when you have a good relationship with God and obey Him, you'll be blessed. When you serve God, you'll be rewarded. When you don't obey God, when you don't uh, have a good relationship with God, there is destruction. And when you don't serve God, there is also destruction. Which side do you want? I'll ask the people, which side do you want? Do you want? And do you believe that God has all the blessings in the world in his hand? 
Na je unaamini kwamba Mungu ako na baraka zote katika mikono yake? And do you believe that God sees your life? Na na wewe unaona ya kwamba Mungu anaona and he knows who loves him and bless and serve him. Na anajua yule anayemtumikia unapomtumikia. And he blesses people greatly. Na anabariki watu wake kwa ukubwa. So this house is very helpful you can draw it for your people. Hii hii nyumba ni ya dhamana sana unaweza utolea watu wako. Okay now I give you this verses. Nataka nikupe hizi nakili hizi vitabu. Okay for the first point everything is in God's hand. Kila kitu kiko mikononi mwa Bwana. The verses Psalm 24:1 The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So your life, your health, your future is all in the hand of God. And there is no way you can run, run away from him. And also uh, Revelation chapter 2 verse 23 Na kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana 22 aya yake ya 3 The verse says that you know the, the Lord searches the heart of all people Ya kwamba Mungu angalia mioyo za kila mtu that he sees everyone's heart Na anaona kila moyo wa kila mmoja Okay so okay. that's the uh, first point Kipengele cha kwanza And then the second point on the right hand side and about you know having close relationship with God and obeying God. Kipengele kingine kwa mkono wa kulia ya kwamba kumheshimu Mungu na kumtii. Okay, the Bible verse is Matthew 6:33. Um, kitabu cha Mathayo 6:33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. Oh, yes. Now what does seek the kingdom of God mean? First we want more people to enter the kingdom of God to be saved. Kwanza tunahitaji watu kuja katika ufalme wa Mungu kuokolewa. We want to bring more people in the kingdom of God. Tunataka tulete watu wengi katika ufalme wa Mungu. And the second is we let our heart be the kingdom of God. Na tuache mioyo zetu ziwe za Let our heart be the kingdom of God. Waacha mioyo zetu ziwe ufalme wa Mungu. Now this concept is very important. Now where is God the king? When people obey him, right? And there is the kingdom of God. Now there are churches that people just love the world. They love fun. And they don't love Jesus. Is Jesus the king of this church? No. No. Then they're not seeking the kingdom of God. The seeking the kingdom of God not only means we bring people to believe in Jesus. Not only to bring people to believe in Jesus. But also we say yes Lord when you tell me to do something I will do it. Uh, I dare not disobey you. Now one thing very hard for many people is to be very nice to your husband or wife. Many people when they look at a husband or wife they say I'm tired. He bugs me all the time. I'm happier when he's not around. Because when people see each other every day, they see the faults of each other. Instead of saying he is Or she is the most important person. Badala ya kusema yeye ni mtu wa muhimu sana katika maisha. Of course God is 
Above all, the most important. Hata hivyo Mungu ni zaidi ya yote ya muhimu. But among the people on earth, lakini miongoni mwa watu katika dunia. Do you agree that our spouse is the most important person? Yes. Je, unakubaliana ya kwamba mume wako ama mke wako ni mtu aliyowadhamana zaidi? If our relationship with our spouse is good, uhusiano wetu na wake wetu ama na mume wetu kama ni mzuri, there will be hindrance to the ministry. Hasa kutakuwa na pingamizi katika huduma. But if the relationship has problem, lakini kama usiano wetu uko na shida, when a pastor goes to church, pastor akienda kanisani, he says, my wife doesn't like to listen to my sermon. Mbibi yangu hataki kuisikia ujumbe wangu. My wife doesn't appreciate my ministry. Mke wangu hata ashukuru huduma yangu. So that gives Satan a foothold. Asa unampatia shetani mwanya. So it's very important that we build up our marriage. Na ni posa ni musana tuunde jamii. A bad marriage is really a pain in our life ndo ambaya ni chungu sana maishani right do you agree yeah. unakubalia yeah. pain yeah. ni uchungu but it can be improved lakini inaweza we'll talk about later tutaongea hiyo baadaye so the king of god is when we say lord you are my king in my heart hadi posa tunaposema bwana wewe ni mfalme katika moyo wangu you are my king in my home wewe ni mfalme kwa nyumba yangu you are my king in my church wewe ni mfalme kwa kanisa langu but many pastors say wachungaji wengi wanasema i am the king of my church mimi ndio bwana ama mfalme wa kanisa langu you have to do my way uwezi kupita jani mwangu they don't think of god's way first but after njia za mungu kwanza because they look for power maana wanaita wanataka nguvu and now they have a group of people in the church kwa sababu wako na watu kanisani they have a feeling of control wanaisi kwamba wako na nguvu za kuwaongoza and a feeling of control gives a lot of people a satisfaction na dambi ya kuongozi inaupatia watu kutotosheleka sana but if we let god be the lord then there is much more satisfaction lakini tukiwacha mungu kuwa bwana kutakuwa na utimilifu na kutoshelezwa kuliko kuzuri sana the truth is of seeking god's kingdom na hiyo ndio mambo mawili ya kutafuta ufalme wa Mungu. First you want more people to enter the kingdom of God. Kitu ya kwanza ni kutafuta watu kuja katika ufalme wa Mungu. Second you let Jesus be the king wherever you are. Na ya pili mfanye Yesu kuwa bwana popote ulipo. Then God knows it. Na Mungu anajua hiyo. And he bless you. Atakubariki. Amen. Let me tell you my age. Wacha nikwambie umri yangu. Can you guess my age? Unaweza unaweza guess. Damu unaweza Salma ko umri wangu. I am 66. Mimi niko 66. And I'm still strong. Na ningali na nguvu. And I don't need eye glasses. Na mimi sihitaji macho ile. Now there are people who are 20 years younger than I am. Na kuna watu wenye miaka 20. When they read small letters they cannot read it. They need the eye glasses. So I some of my people paka watumikie magogo sio wasom. I think God that when I love God. Na pele kwa sababu nampenda Mungu. God blesses my health. Mungu anabariki afya yangu. Amen. And God blesses me many ways. Na Mungu ananibariki kwa njia nyingi sana. Let me tell you my two experiences at two airports. Wacha nikwambie hali nilizokumbana nazo mara mbili katika uwanja wa ndege. To show the favor of God. Ni kuonyesha kibali cha Mungu. One time I missed a plane. Ni wakati mmoja nilikosa ndege because I didn't realize the time. Maana si kuelewa wakati. I was half resting. Nilikuwa ninapumzika kwa vupi. When I realized the time has gone, nilipotambua mudi mwenda. I went up to the counter and asked them, you know, I I, I should get on that plane. And na nikaanza kukimbia niende kwa ndege. And the woman said, well the plane has gone. Na wakaniambia ndege imeenda. You have to rebook the ticket. Na You have to rebook the ticket. Utakata tikiti tena. Utakata tikiti tena. And I went to the rebooking counter. Na nikaenda mahali penye wanabukia ndege. And the person said you bought a ticket in Hong Kong. Na huyu akajambia uliununua ndege kule Hong Kong. So you have to call Hong Kong to rebook the ticket. Sasa nataka na urudi Hong Kong ukachukue tikiti nyingine. And when I called the agent, nilipoita manakala wao. She said it's complicated. Akasema hiyo ni nini imechanganya 
See you can try any other way. I asked the woman again. She said, no way, the plane has left. And then I prayed to God. Uh, With you, everything is possible. You can do it. Oh Lord, please help. And then I went up to the counter. And I said to the woman, Can you call, make a phone call and find out what can be done? Now, in, in that situation, it looks like impossible. She made a phone call. And then she looked like that. The plane has come back. I asked the people in the plane what happened. They said they tried to take off, but they could not. So after an hour, they still could not take off, so it turned back. And so I can get on the plane again without any charge. That's, isn't that a favor of God? Amen. Now the second time is when I came this time. Now because I have to transfer from plane to plane. I didn't realize when I go from Nairobi to Kisumu that I have to go through customs and also take out the, uh, the uh, immigration and take out the luggage. And I allow myself only 15 minutes. Now for many airports it's okay, you know. I don't need to take luggage. I just take off, take, you know, like, Get off from the plane and, and go to the next gates. But when I was in Hong Kong, the person at the airport said to me, Do you realize you have to go through immigration, you have to wait for the luggage? And you you have to wait for the luggage. You might miss the plane. So I pray all the way. Lord Jesus, you are almighty. And you love us all. And you have a way. Now when I get to Nairobi. I will say, please, let us get off quickly. But the pilot said, announced, we have to wait for a tow truck to tow the plane to a gate, you know, a truck to pull the airplane, airplane to the gates. And we waited for a long time. And then the tow truck went very slowly. By the time I got off the plane, it was over half an hour or more late, you know. At first I thought I would rush to, you know, try to go through everything. And then finally when I got to the place, you know, to, to uh, check in my luggage, and then, you know, I said, uh, how about the plane that, you know, I was supposed to get on? He said, it has left already. <laughs> and I told him, you know, our plane way in the airport for half a, more than half an hour for the tow truck. And then he said, well, in that case, okay, I'll just let you have the next plane that will fly and no charge. No, no. Because it was the fault of the plane to wait for so, so long. So there's no charge on me. 
kulibishwa kwangu kwambo jaribu hii kwa ajili yako lakini nasema unapompenda Mungu matatenda miujiza yenye utaamini I've seen all kinds of miracles in my life. Nimeshawa yona miujiza mingi maishani mwangu. Including nine times people saw me before they saw me uh, in person they saw me in dreams and vision. Yaani watu wa tisa kuniona mimi kabla wanione kwa kiasi lakini wameniona tayari kimaono. Before I went to some countries they saw in me in my dream or vision before I appeared. Ya kwamba kabla niende katika nchi zingine, tayari wameniona kwa maono kabla nifike. Now I'm not saying I'm good. Sisemi mimi ni mzuri ama ni bora. God is good. Nasema Mungu ni mwema. God chose me when I was weak. Mungu alinichagua nilipokuwa dhaifu. When I committed many sins. Nilipokuwa nimetenda dhambi nyingi. When I experienced the Holy Spirit. Nilipohisi Roho Mtakatifu. My life was totally transformed. Maisha yangu yalibadilika. And I say I want to follow God totally. Na nikasema nataka nimtumikie Mungu kikamilifu. I don't want any sin to block my relationship with God yote zuie ushirika wangu na Mungu. And I want to obey God totally. Na nataka niheshimu Mungu kwa kumilifu. God totally. Kwa sababu ya hiyo kamilifu. And I found that God blesses me in many many ways. Na nikapata Mungu ananibariki kwa njia nyingi 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 sana. So I hope you have the same view toward God. Na niamini uko na hiyo hali ya kumuulizia Mungu. Then you will say I want to serve God and love God. Nataka nimtumikie Bwana na mpenda Bwana. I want to follow it to follow him totally. Nataka nimfuate kikamilifu. Can you say it loudly? Na waweza sema kwa nguvu. Nataka nimfuate Mungu kikamilifu. Nataka nimfuate Mungu kikamilifu. So when we seek the kingdom of God, sasa tunapotafuta falme wa Mungu. All these things will be added to you. Hizi vitu zote zitaongezewa kwetu. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's why I like God a lot. Na hiyo ndio ina maana nampenda Mungu sana. Amen. Every time I tell people, kila wakati mimi namba I am not worthy. Mimi si staili. I say to God, I'm not worthy. Naambia Mungu mimi si staili. I don't want to have any pride. Sitaki kuwa na kiburi chochote kile. All God's work. Hii ni kazi ya Mungu. All glory to God, Lord. Oh, utukufu kwa Mungu. All glory to you. Oh, utukufu wote kwako. It's you who have changed me. Ni wewe ndiye umenibadilisha. I want to glorify you wherever Na I go. Na nataka nikutukuze popote niendapo. I hope you are the same. Na tumaini hata wewe. Okay? Now, this one explain more. I but the other ones I will not explain so long. Hii ni nimefafanua kwa urefu, lakini nyingine zitafafanua kwa urefu sana. But you see how important it is our testimonies are important for our messages. Sasa unaona ni muhimu sana ushuhuda wetu ni wa muhimu sana kwa ujumbe zetu. And how we respond to God is very important. Na jinsi tunavyomuitikia Mungu ni ya muhimu sana. I always tell people. Mara nyingi waambia watu. And I always do it. Na huwa natenda hivyo pia. Lord, I like you. Mungu ninakupenda. I appreciate you. Ninakushukuru wewe. You're my best. Wewe ni mwema kwangu. You're my everything. Wewe ni kila kitu kwangu. I want to let people see your goodness. Nataka watu waone wema wako. So people will follow you. Ili ya kwamba watu wakufuate. When we have this love for God, tunapokuwa na upendo kwa Mungu. And appreciation for God, na shukurani kwa Mungu. People can see the real life of God in us. Mungu watu wataona upendo kamilifu wa Mungu ndani yetu. And they would like to learn from you. Na watataka kujifunza kutoka kwako. Do you agree? Unakubaliana? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, another of verses about this, you know, have a good relation good relationship with God and obey God God will bless us. Na kuwa ni shirika karibu na Mungu kwa na uhusiano wa kamili na Mungu Mungu atatubariki. Psalm 34:10 Zaburi 34:10 Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Wale wanaomtafuta Bwana hawatakosa kitu kilichochema. Even the lions will grow weak and hungry. Hata wadogo wado, vijana watakimbia na kuchoka. And then Genesis 39:2. Je, kitabu cha mwanzo 39:2. Mm -hmm. 
The Lord was, was with Joseph and he prospered. Mungu alikuwa na Yusufu na alifanikiwa. And then John 15 verse 5 and 7. Katika kitabu cha Yohana 15 aya ya 5 na 7. When we are in the vine the, of Jesus then he will remain in us and will bear much fruit. Tuko Yesu ndiye mzabibu na sisi ni matawi. Tukidumu ndani yake tutazaa matunda yaliyo mema. And serving God the next block the serving God will always bring rewards. Na kutumikia Mungu kutaleta jawabu. Mark 9:41. Ma, ma, Mariko 9:41. Whoever gives you a cup of cold water in my name because you belong to the Messiah you he certainly will not lose his reward. Mimi anakupa kikombe cha angalau cha maji baridi kwa sababu wewe ni mtumishi wangu hatakosa jawabu lako. And Matthew 25 verse 23. Matayo 25 sura ya ya And the master said, "You are good and faithful servant." Naye bwana akasema, "Wewe mjakazi mwaminifu, come and share your master's happiness." Kuja ukafurahie furaha ya bwana wako. And we can now share God's happiness. Na tunaweza shiriki furaha ya Mungu. And Luke 6:38. Luka sita salasini na nane A gift it will be given to you Peana na ita peano kwako With good measure pressed down shaken together and running over Na kiwango kilicho pima vizuri kimetikiswa na kina mkagika Okay, so it says on the right side when we have a good relationship with God and obey, obey Him and serve Him, certainly blessings and rewards will come to us. And then on the left hand side, Galatians 6 8. Whoever, whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Na yoyote apandaye kufurahisha mwili katika mwili atavuna uharibifu So when people want to please themselves want to fulfill the flesh then they will reap destruction Sasa watu kama wanataka kujifurahisha kufurahisha mwili nataka nikwambie watavuna uharibifu And John 5:14 Yohana 5:14 there was a man healed of 38 years of sickness. And then after Jesus healed him, Jesus said to him, Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So when a person sins, worse things can happen to us. What can happen to us? We have guilt feelings. We don't have peace and joy. We have problem with people. And God doesn't like us. And Satan has a way to attack us. And Satan can destroy our ministry. Now let me ask you, can you bear the worst thing happen to you? Can you say it doesn't matter, something bad come to me, it doesn't matter? You won't, right? So we must stop sinning, right? Now, now many men they think they have sex with the woman is for their advantage. And to look at a beautiful woman with lust. But actually it will bring destruction to his life. Lakini italeta wali pipu katika maisha yake. The man might say, but I won't get pregnant. The girl will get pregnant. I won't get pregnant. Mwana munga atasema kwa mba sita pata mimba, sita shika mimba. I can just run away. Na weza kimbia tu. No consequence. Hakuna dawayani hile madara. There is a lie. Iyo ni uongo. So we should tell our people. Tuambia watu wetu. To the men, even if a woman offers her body to you, don't take it. 
kwa wanaume hata mwanamke akipeana mwili wako sichukue. That is like Satan offering something to you. Ni kama shetani kuleta kitu kwako. Don't think that is for your advantage. Usiseme ni kwa ajili ya faida yako. Many men, many Christian men when they date, they think if I have a chance to have sex with her is for my advantage. Na wanaume wengine wanasema kwamba kiwa na date na mtu anasema kwamba hata nikiwa naye ni kwa ajili ya faida yangu. They have to change the whole concept. Wanatakana waangalie katika mtazamo mwingine. Having premarital sex or adultery kuwa na mahusiano ya ndoa ya nje ama uzinifu is worse than eating garbage ni mbaya zaidi kuliko kuishi kukula uchafu is eating poison kukula sumu is eating eternal poison ni kukula sumu ya milele so we ask them can you bear the worst thing happen to you sasa unaweza angalia kitu kibaya kinaweza kinachoweza kukutokea And then many girls try to attract not guys with the body. Na wabinti wengi wanajaribu kupendeza wanaume na mili zao. They think that when they get a guy they get everything. Wanadhani wakipata wamepata kila kitu. They don't think of God. Awe fikiri kuhusu Mungu. And they reaping all kinds of, you know, destruction and bad thing to themselves. Na wanavuna uharibifu na mambo mabaya kwa ajili yao. And also when they get pregnant they really have a lot of trouble after that. Na wakikushika mimba wanakuwa na shida nyingi kwa ajili ya hiyo. So this verse John 5:14 is very very useful. Hasa hiyo Yohana 5:14 ni ya muhimu sana. Now let me use myself as an example. Wacha nijitumie kama mfano. I go to different countries to bless the people. Ninaenda katika mataifa mengi nikibariki watu. If one day you hear that pastor you has committed some serious sin na ukisikizi kumoja kwamba pastor Yip alitenda dhambi nyingine ya mbaya sana. Na watu wasema tutaki pastor Yip akuje tena. Watafunga njia yangu. Now, you know sometimes one sin can destroy our own and my whole future. Unajua wakati mwingine dhambi moja inaweza kuharibu hatima yangu yote. Can you bear the consequence that your future ministry is destroyed by one sin? Je, unaweza ujeweka mahali ya kwamba huduma yako ya umilele imeharibika kwa ajili ya dhambi moja? Or even like stealing some people from other churches. Ama kuiba washirika kutoka kwa kanisa zingine. It can destroy a reputation among the pastors. Inaweza ripusia na wako kwa miongoni mwa wachungaji. So, in order to please God, we don't want to do that kwa sisi petu sisi kumpendeza Mungu hatutaki kutenda hivyo because one day at the judgment seat God will tell us that again maana siku moja Mungu atatuulizia hiyo tena you have stolen people from other churches umeiba washirika wengine so let us really be sensitive to sin wacha tuwe makini sana kwa dhambi and sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit na kuwa makini kwa mwelekezo wa roho mtakatifu how many times has the holy spirit spoken to us and we say lord wait wait ni ma some time ni mangapi roho mtakatifu wa mungu ametuendea anasema mungu ngoja ngoja nipe muda fulani instead of saying lord when you speak i listen badala ya kusema mungu kinena nitasikia Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now in John 15 verse 6. Yohana 15 aya Okay, every verse you can say twice so they can make sure they write this down. Say it twice now. John 15:6. Yohana 15:6. Yohana 15 aya ya So if you do not remain in me, then you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers and this branch will be picked up and thrown into the fire and burn. Sasa msipodumu kwangu mimi, nyinyi ni kama tawi ambalo litakatwa na kutupiliwa mbali na hata kuchomwa na kukokotwa na kuchomwa na moto. Now you can ask the people in your church, how many of you pray every day? You talk to God and ask God to forgive you. Unaweza uliza kanisa ni wangapi wenu ya kwamba wanaomba kila siku ya kwamba Mungu akaweze kuwasamehe Some people just don't pray. Wakati mwingine watu waombi. And then we can tell them if you don't stay in the Lord, 
the Lord will not stay in you. Unatakano ambia kwamba kama utakaa katika Bwana, Bwana hatakaa katika kwako. And this purchase a throne in fire, what does that mean? Na hiu hii tawi ambalo linatupwa katika moto inamaanisha nini? Is that heaven? Je, ni mbinguni? No, it is hell. Pana ni kuzimu. So Bible the Bible has some very serious warning. Na liposa Biblia iko na njia nyingi za kukuonywa. And it's saying that the Bible has a lot of a verses of love of God and his grace. Na mistari mingi ziko na mambo kuhusu upendo wa Mungu na neema yake. When we follow God, we don't have to be afraid. Tunapofuata Mungu, tusiogope jambo lolote. Okay? Now the last point he who does not serve God can also reap destruction. Na mkipengele cha mwisho kwamba mwenye hata mtumikia Mungu atavuna uharibifu. Now, what I want to say is we are not saved by doing good. Nataka niseme hivi, hatujaokolewa kwa kutenda wema. We are saved by grace through faith. Hatunaokolewa kwa neema kupitia imani. But the Bible does say if a person you know, he says he believes in Jesus, but he doesn't serve God. There is something wrong with the faith. Na Bibili sema kwamba usipomtumikia Mungu kama kumpenda Mungu kuna shida na imani yako. In Matthew 25, there are three parables about the end time, the judgment time. E katika Matai 25 tano ya kwamba Matthew 25, there are three parables about the judgment time. Nekatika matai shirina tato kuna aina ya mipano mitatu kusu misho wa kanisa. The second parable is about the three servants who have the five talents, two talents, and one talent. Mpano wa pini ni kwamba kunikweko na wale watu ambayo walikuwa na talanta mbili, tatu, na tano. And the servant buried the one talent. Na mtumishi ile talanta moja akaizika. And the master said, "You are wicked and lazy servant." Na bwana kama ambia wewe ni muhovu mtu ambaye ataki ayuko na bidi. And what happens to him? Na nini litendeka kwake? He is thrown into the darkness. Alirushwa katika giza. So he is not saved. Sasa hakuokolewa. Now he's not we are not saved by good works. Hatuokolewi kwa kazi nzuri. But when we are saved then we want to Love God and serve God. Na tunapokolewa tunapenda kumtumikia Mungu na kumpenda Mungu. So if someone doesn't serve God at all, kama hutumikii Mungu kwa kweli, there's something wrong with his faith. Kuna shida na imani yako. Now some people may say the thief who died with Jesus, he did not have a chance to serve God. Na mtu anaweza sema ya kwamba ule mwizi aliyekufa na Yesu hakuwa na nafasi ya kumtumikia Mungu. But actually on the cross he glorified Jesus. Lakini kwa ukweli pale msalabani alimtukuza Yesu. He said this man has not done nothing wrong. Alisema huyu mtu waja tena jambo lolote libaya. And then he said Jesus remember me when your kingdom comes. Akasema Yesu nikumbuke sasa zile falme wako utakapokuja. So he publicly glorified Jesus and call upon Jesus and and you know tell say that Jesus is it doesn't have any sin. Na liposa alimtukuza Yesu na kambele Yesu na kasema Yesu hakuwa na dhambi yoyote. And then Matthew 25 the last parable about the sheep and the goats. Na Matayo 25 aya ya mwisho nasema yani ule mfano wa mwisho unaongea kuhusu kondoo iliyopotea. In verse 45 and 46. Aya 45 na 46. The servant that sheep and the goat has not done this thing to the little ones. Ya kwamba kondoo na mbuzi hawajatenda haya mambo kwa ajili ya hao wadogo. And he's thrown into eternal punishment. Lakini wanatupwa katika hukumu ya milele. Now when I say this I always say we're not saved by doing good. Ninaposema hivi na sem when say not saved by doing good. But when we are saved, we want to do good things to the people around us. Like caring about the Christians or the non-Christians in the church. Strengthening their faith. Visiting them. 
Praying for them. All these are doing good to the other little ones. And when people don't do that, what we to attend evil? If there's something wrong with his faith, Kama kuna kitu kibaya na imani yao. in verse 46 it says that he will go into eternal punishment. Katika Biblia nasema kwamba ataenda hukumu ya milele. Okay, so I tell people this house. Naambia watu katika hii nyumba. Which side you want to be in? Unataka uwe upande gani? Now that is speaking to the mind. Na hivyo kunena katika mawazo. But in order for the person to change, now kwa mtu kubadilika, First, with a prayer, Kwanza na maombi, the encouragement na kuimizwa, that we come to Jesus Lord. We don't want to be lazy servants driven now in the darkness. We don't want to be the goats that are cast into hell. And God can bless us and reward us when we serve Him. So do you want to serve God? So first the teaching and then the prayer. And also I lay hand on people. And ask them have they experienced anything. When they have experienced something, I will tell them. This is what God promised. That you give us peace and love and joy and patience and healing. So God is so real. Do you want to believe in Jesus and let Jesus bless your whole life? So when I bring people to Jesus, I always lay my hand on them and pray for them. After I explain the gospel and lead them to confession, uh, the, the sinner's prayer, and I will tell them one day you can pray for other people you can bless other people just like I bless you do you want to be used by God so I start to encourage people to serve God when they first believe in Jesus and in my messages I always encourage people about the goodness of God we have a wonderful God who blesses in every way we can enjoy him and be strengthened by him and whatever we do for him he will see and also when we sin he also sees and no one can run away from his eyes. Do you want to follow him? So I always encourage people. And sometimes people have hindrances. They say, I have family problems. I have no time. I have no talents. I'm unhappy. All these reasons. But all these can be handled by Jesus. So we need counseling. To help them handle this problem. We need to care about people individually. And we need to train our people who are willing to serve to counsel people and pray for people. And then we encourage them to talk to each one who comes to church. If we just preach in public, People might not get it. Watu wanaweza kosa kupata. And people might have fallen asleep too. Watu wanaweza lala pia. So we have individuals talking to them. Tunaita tunakila moja moja penda kuongea na wao. So in my after my message in Hong Kong, baada ya ujumbe wangu kule Hong Kong, we divide the small groups. Tunaweka katika vikundi vidogo vidogo. And the leaders will talk to the people. Na viongozi wataongea na watu. See whether they can apply the truth. 
Uwana ya kwamba kama watakilisha yule ujumbe See whether they have problems they can handle Uwana kama kuna shida wazishugulikie And we help them to apply the truth and, and, and take care of the problems Na kuwashugulika waweke ile ukweli katika matendo na kuwashugulikia And then when they learn to handle the problems Na wakishugulikia hizo shida Then we encourage them to serve and to be trained Na watawaimiza kutumika na kufuzwa And when they are willing Na zazire wanaziki wanataitaji I let them see how I do it Wacha waone jizi bile nagafanya I tell them how I do it Nina waonyesha jizi nagafanya And then I let them do it and I see it Na nina wacha wapanye nikiona So this is how I raise up people from when they first believe in Jesus Na nibosa ini kuinua watu tangu tu wanapu mwamini Christo Yesu And they always hear that serving God is something that will, you know, uh that God is happy with. Na wanaona ya kwamba kumtumikia mungu ni kitu nye mungu anafra nacho. It's not like saying if you don't serve God, God will beat you up. Sige kusema ya kwamba usipo mtumikia mungu ni takupiga mangume. I always encourage people with the grace of God. Uwa na fariji watu kwa neema ya mungu. God loves us very much. Mungu wa natupenda sana. And he'll bless us richly when we follow him. Na tatubariki tele tele kama tukamfata. But I also will tell them the warning. Na nitawapa tena ile honyo. If we don't follow God and don't obey God. Na kama uta mtumikia mungu na kumweshimu. Destruction can come. Waibifu unaweza kuja But God doesn't want to destroy you Lakini mungu ataki kukwaribu He want to bless you Anataka kukubariki So do you want the blessings of God? Sasu na itaji baraka za mungu Okay, so this is how I encourage people to serve God Even yo uwa nafunza watu kumtumikia mungu Okay